thank you to this video's sponsor, War Thunder. More on them later. Hello there, you beautiful people! My name is Willow, and welcome to my first Fallout New Vegas challenge run! My last run in Fallout 4 with only heavy weapons was super satisfying, so today we're gonna take on something thematic while we find out if I can beat Fallout New Vegas's very hardcore difficulty as a sniper. Before we get into the run, let's lay down some ground rules. I can only use scoped weapons to deal damage, and VATS is banned. I must play the entire game on the very hard difficulty with hardcore mode on. I can't use any bugs or glitches on purpose to exploit the game. I can only use visual mods with the exception of New Vegas True Scopes. And I cannot use console commands for anything but fixing bugs. With the rules of the run laid out, let's take a look at the challenge itself. Overall, I expect this run to be more difficult than it seems at first glance. I'm worried about obtaining a scoped weapon early on in the run, and I think it's going to take a long time before I get a powerful weapon in general. But I'm excited to take on this run nonetheless. I write these scripts as I go, and this part has been written prior to beginning the run. If you want to skip past my starting thoughts and get right into the gameplay, skip to the timecode on screen now. With them gone, let's dump some info. Jumping right on into it, let's start with the only thing that matters, which is weapons. So, in my last sniper run, I used the weapon modding system to determine what I could use, but in this one, I'm just saying anything with a scope is valid. Overall, I'm quite worried about obtaining my first scoped weapon, as there are very few weapons that spawn with scopes, and only a couple that allow me to add a scope through New Vegas's modification system. Speaking of the weapon modding system in New Vegas, it's incredibly basic compared to Fallout 4, but should allow me to add a few good modifications to each gun. The first gun of the run, will most likely be a varmint rifle with a night vision scope, or maybe a 9mm pistol if I can find a scope for it early. Getting a varmint rifle or a 9mm pistol is incredibly easy, but the scope is another matter entirely. I know that Chet from the Good Springs General Store can stock both scopes, but I'm really unsure if I'm gonna be lucky enough to actually have one spawn in the store, and even then, I don't know how expensive it is, so I'm not sure I'll be able to afford it very early on. After those weapons, there's a ton that I can use in this this run, and I'll throw them all on screen with my thoughts on them, but overall, I'm most excited about using the hunting rifle, as it's kind of the classic sniper of the Fallout franchise, as well as the anti-material rifle, as I'm sure everyone wants to see some sick headshots with that weapon. Other than that, I want to try and get some of the unique weapons as well, but I think that's enough talking about weapons, let's jump right into the run, and make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. The run starts with a classic cutscene that everyone knows oh so well. After finding out that the game was rigged from the start and getting shot in the head, I awake in the house of an old man named Doc Mitchell. After getting a nostalgia hit from all of the DLC pop-ups, I listen to the good Doc tell me about how he patched me up before crafting my character and giving them an appropriate name. I then head over to the Vigor Tester machine and set my special stats, which are 6 in Strength for carry weight and weapon requirements, 5 in Perception for skills, 5 in Endurance for health and skills, 6 in Charisma for better trading, 8 in agility for a higher gun skill, and four in luck for skills. With my stats set up, I head over to the doctor's couch where he gives me a few verbal tests to learn about my mental state and health history. Before I started the run, I asked my chat what kind of playthrough they wanted to see, and people wanted to see me be evil, so I pick the most horrible options I can throughout the questions, leading Doc Mitchell to realize he helped save a psychopath. I then get to tag three skills to give them a higher starting point. I decide to tag the barter guns and lockpick skills before picking the trigger discipline and skilled traits. With the psych evaluation done, he leads me to the front door where he gives me a Pip-Boy and Vault suit before sending me off on my way. I go to leave his house and the game crashes. This proceeds to happen a few more times, but eventually I do manage to get out of the Doc's house and into the Mojave Wasteland, only for the frame rate to be absolutely horrid until the game ends up crashing again. I then spend a long while battling with these crashes and trying very mods until eventually I managed to get the game to become stable again. With the game fixed, I head over to the Prospector Saloon and speak with Sunny Smiles, who takes me out to the back of the bar and shows me how to use the Varmint Rifle. This is important, as obtaining a Varmint Rifle is one of the first steps to getting a working weapon for the run. I then head over to the Good Springs General Store and check with Chet to see if he has the night vision scope for this rifle. Unfortunately, he doesn't, but I did pull my live chat to see if I could sell the DLC starting stuff, and they said yes. So I start selling off all the DLC items and get lucky enough to stumble upon a 9mm pistol scope in his shop. This allows me to get my first weapon of the run, and it's a run-down crappy 9mm pistol, but it is enough to get me started in this run. 
With that, I head over to the saloon again to witness an altercation between the barkeep Trudy and a man named Joe Cobb. Apparently Joe here is looking for a man named Ringo, who's hiding in a gas station nearby. After learning all of this from Trudy, I make my way over to Cobb and find out he's a member of the Powder Gangers. They're a group of escaped convicts from a nearby NCR prison who really like explosives. I talk to him for a while and convince him to take over Good Springs by force. He then tells me to go kill Ringo while he gets more gang members to help assault the town. I then head over to the abandoned gas station and enter to find Ringo brandishing a pistol at me. I tell him he better not miss before he gives me a deck of cards and offers to play a game with me like a discount version of the Joker. But since we're in Vegas, I figured I should act like any normal gambler, so I pull out my 9mm pistol and unload it into him, only to find out it does pitiful damage. I die after doing about half his health and damage before trying again, and while I do better, the pistol keeps jamming on me every time I reload, and I die in a very similar way before deciding to change my strategy a bit on my next attempt, where I make sure to get a sneak attack on my first shot before continuing to fight normally. It's a tense and difficult fight, but I get lucky and shoot his gun out of his hand, allowing me to kill him before he can take me down. This fight gives me an idea of how difficult this run will be, and much like my Skyrim runs, the enemies are going to be bullet sponges and I need to turn each fight into a battle of attrition. With Ringo down, I head back to Cobb, who tells me to shake down Good Springs for supplies to use in the upcoming fight. So I head over to Chet and use my barter skill to convince him to give me armor for the fight. Afterwards, I head over to the Doc's house and he scares the crap out of me as I couldn't find him until I turn around to see him sitting in the dark like a psychopath. I try to convince him to give me medical supplies, but my skills aren't high enough to do so. Then one of my livestream viewers donates for me to kill the Doc, so I start unloading my 9mm pistol into him while he runs to grab a laser pistol, but by the time he has a weapon, I have already done enough to finish off the creepy doctor. I take his medical supplies and give them to Cobb so we can start the assault on Good Springs. The fighting really isn't difficult as I take next to no damage and just get to free fire into the defenders as the powder gangers soak up all the heat. I loot everything I can before speaking with Cobb, who tells me I should head over to the prison and meet up with some other powder gangers. With the town under new management, I feel my job here is done and it's time for me to move on from Good Springs. So I make my way south towards the nearest town named Prim, and along the way I get into a fight with a bunch of geckos who end up eating a lot of my ammo. When I approach the town, this creepy NCR guy starts running at me, so I run away from him until he stops. I then walk up and stare at him silently, but when I try and walk past him, he tells me the town is off limits. I tell him I'll be fine, and he doesn't stop me from entering the town, so it's not off limits, I guess? I proceed to discover Prim as a location before fast traveling back to Good Springs so I can trade with Chet for more ammo. Afterwards, I fast travel back to Prim and start fighting with these convicts who are apparently powder gangers, but they're still hostile with me because because they just decided to be murder hobos, I guess. Anyways, I clear the outside of the town and then make my way into a nearby casino where I find a man who greets me named Johnson Nash. He explains that the entire town of Prim is hiding out in this casino as the convicts have taken over. It turns out in a convenient turn of events that he runs the general store and courier office that gave me the job that got me shot in the intro cutscene. Oh, also, I forgot to mention that in the beginning cutscene for the game, I was shot for a package I was carrying as a courier. Either way, I continue talking with the old man and he tells me the order I was assigned was a strange one. I describe the assailants who tried to kill me to him and he tells me I should speak with the town's deputy who is currently held hostage by the convicts in a nearby hotel. So I head over to free him and get this sick sneak attack headshot on the first convict before moving further into the hotel fighting a couple of convicts at a time. The combat is surprisingly not as difficult as I thought it would be as I'm able to get a lot of sneak attacks and abuse cover pretty effectively in these indoor dungeons. I manage to clear out the final room of convicts before freeing Deputy Beagle from his bindings and heading outside to speak with him. He tells me that my attacker is headed south towards Nipton, so that's the next destination on my tear through the Mojave Wasteland. But before we do that, I want to take a quick vacation from the Mojave Wasteland to ask you a simple question. Have you ever felt like jumping behind the controls of a tank and just going to town on all of those who stand before you? Well, now you can because War Thunder is a free-to-play vehicle combat simulator with over 2,500 planes, tanks, helicopters, and ships ranging from 1920s biplanes all the way up to modern-day main battle tanks. I've been playing for a long time and my favorite feature of War Thunder 
is this really cool x-ray damage view where you can see exactly where your shots hit the enemy vehicle and what components you damaged. This feature makes it easy to immerse yourself in the intense combat of War Thunder while you pilot, sail, and drive incredibly detailed vehicles that look and sound real. With a community of over 70 million players, you'll always have a new battle to take on in the ultimate game for fans of military history. You can play for free on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation using the link in the pinned comment or description below. All new and returning players that haven't played in six months will receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium account time. It's only available for a limited time, so be quick! Also, I'm going to be playing War Thunder with my viewers on Discord next Friday, so make sure you're in the Discord and you've used the link in the description to get your benefits. Now, where were we? Oh right, we just left the town of Prim and are heading towards Nifton to track down the man in the suit. Soon after leaving the town, we run into two escaped convicts and a member of the Jackal Gang. They appear to be hostile on sight, so I use my scope to quickly down one of them from afar before continuing to fight my way through the other two. I was worried that the enemies would be too tanky for me to progress without finding a new weapon, but so far the 9mm is really showing itself to be a workhorse and I'm happy with its performance. I continue on my way to Nipton and run into more Jackal members, but they're all stacked up on each other and don't really react to me firing wildly into them until I kill a couple of their members. I then continue fighting the group, but end up running out of ammo and being forced to run away. Once I'm safely away from the lunatics, I fast travel back to the Good Springs General Store, where thankfully Chet is selling a varmint rifle scope and suppressor. I quickly buy them and a bunch of ammo for the varmint rifle and pistol before traveling back to the jackal gang members where I try out the rifle only to die immediately to all the jackals. I go at it again, this time using the pistol instead of the varmint rifle as it has a higher rate of fire and there's a lot of enemies and this turns out to work perfectly. It allows me to kill off all the jackals and loot them before making my way into Nipton where I run into a powder ganger named Oliver who is ranting and raving about winning the lottery. I let him enjoy his win for a bit but when he starts running away, I decide to mow him down with my pistol because in the Mojave Wasteland, there are no winners. I then enter the town of Nipton to find the town decorators really went all out for my arrival. There's these cool pinatas running down the street and a bonfire in my honor. I speak with a man wearing a wolf on his head who tells me to go spread the delightful news of the celebration here at Nipton to everyone in the Mojave. So I do just that, running over to the nearby NCR outpost and telling a ranger along with a soldier about the party and they freak out about it for whatever reason. I guess they just don't like cake. Afterwards, I fast travel back to Nipton and start making my way through this canyon and when I enter, I start a huge firefight with a bunch of jackals. It's a really long and honestly tense fight as a lot of the jackals have automatic weapons allowing them to deal damage very quickly to me. I don't end up dying but it takes a ton of ammo and time to clear out all of the criminals before continuing on my path through the canyon. I continue on until I run into a very fortunate battle where some NCR and Legion troops are fighting each other. I stand around waiting for one of the sides to win, but during the fight, one of the NCR soldiers throws a grenade that damages a passing merchant, which leads to this funny situation where the caravan guards start fighting with the NCR troopers right after they defeat the Legion. So in the end, both all of the NCR and Legion troops here ended up dying and me and the merchants walk away with a very nice haul. The reason this is so fortunate is because now now I've obtained both NCR and Legion armor which will be amazingly useful later as I can use these armor sets as disguises to get into areas that otherwise would lead to me being attacked on sight. After the battle concludes, I start making my way east until I find a cave. This, my beautiful viewers, is not any old cave. It is the Cave of Destiny. It contains the Excalibur of this run, the legendary varmint rifle known as the Rat Slayer. This is the story of how I took on Brockflower Cave. <laughs> this is such a dumb bit. Why am I doing a summoning salt reference? Oh, either way, yeah, I ran in there and I just died a lot. Like I kept dying over and over and over until eventually I had the gigabrain idea of running past all the overgrown rats and out of the cave after grabbing the rat slayer. This worked really well and I don't know why I wasted like an hour of my life dying to rats. With this legendary weapon obtained, I continue on my search for the man in the checkered suit by making my way over to the town of Novak which is a pre-war motel featuring a huge dinosaur in front of it. 
I enter the lobby and no one's there, so I take the opportunity to lockpick the floor safe and find a note that seems to be some kind of bill of sale for a slave named Carla to the Legion. It states the seller as Genie and ooh, I sense some drama here in this town. Anyways, it's none of my business, so I just wait in the lobby until someone shows up and wouldn't you guess it, it's the lady who sold the slave. She runs the front desk and I ask her about my attackers and she directs me to speak with a former NCR sniper named Manny. I go speak with him and try to convince him to tell me what he knows of the man in the checkered suit, but he insists I help him with a ghoul problem first. That sounds really time consuming and I don't really want to do it, so instead I pickpocket the marksman and find a note that leads my search towards a nearby settlement named Boulder City. So I head out of Novak and get ambushed by a bunch of vipers. Not the snake, but a group of raiders that compete with the jackals named the vipers. Anyways, I try running away, but unfortunately one of them has an explosive weapon that turns me into a pile of meat on the floor before I'm able to make enough distance. I go at it again, and this time I notice there's a nearby traveling merchant and his bodyguard heading towards the vipers. So I take up a position on a nearby hill and start sniping at the vipers using Rat Slayer and my pistol, and I'm expecting expecting to bait the vipers into fighting the caravan, but strangely I run into another situation where despite me hitting enemies and dealing damage to them, it seems as though they don't register it and just stand there letting me get a ton of pot shots. But like last time, after I deal enough damage they do start responding and they run into the merchants just as I'd planned, and together between me, the bodyguard, and the traveling merchant we manage to down all of the vipers. This allows me to continue on my way towards Bull city and along the way I stop by the 188 trading post but I don't find anything I really need so I sell off some loot before reaching Boulder City. Calling it a city is a bit of a stretch as it's more akin to a set of ruins than an actual settlement. Either way I try to make my way into the so-called city and I'm stopped by Lieutenant Monroe of the NCR who says the city is locked down due to a bunch of great cons that have taken some NCR troops prisoner. I ask if I can go and try and talk to the cons and he says sure. So I make make my way inside and speak with one of the men from the intro cutscene named Jessup, and after a long conversation, he reveals that Benny ditched them and is most likely on the Vegas Strip by now. I then decide to get the Great Cons killed by releasing the NCR prisoners and fighting them alongside the NCR. This turned out to be quite a blunder as I get absolutely destroyed by their 10mm shub machine guns and... <laughs> Oh, I just became Sean Connery for a second. There are 10 millimeter shot machine guns and shivers down my spine. <laughs> Oh, it's moments like these that I live for, the happy little accidents. Either way, on my next attempt, I managed to free the prisoners and play the fight out a bit slower, taking pot shots and letting the NCR soldiers do the majority of the fighting. I start making my way out of the city when I notice that one of the soldiers I freed is trying to kill me. I'm really confused about it, but I'm not gonna die to him, so I fill him with holes, which leads to me being shunned by the NCR. Well, screw them, it was self-defense, and I leave the city to make my way over towards the New Vegas Strip until I reach a fort named Camp McCarran held by the NCR. I quickly help the troopers outside kill some fiends, a local raider gang, before entering the fort itself wearing the NCR armor I got earlier. Really quick for anyone who hasn't played New Vegas, when you wear the armor of a faction it acts as a disguise making you appear as an ally to that faction. Only important NPCs can see through a disguise. Camp McCarran is one of the best places you can use a disguise because it gives access to the monorail station which lets you enter the Vegas Strip without coughing up 2,000 caps as you normally have to do to enter. Without a disguise, you can still technically do this, but it makes it a lot easier, and that's why getting the Legion and NCR armor for free earlier was so important. Once inside the Vegas Strip, I get approached by a Securitron named Victor. I haven't mentioned him before, but he's the robot that dug us out of our grave in Good Springs, and we also saw him in Novak when we passed through. He appears to have been following us, and he informs me that the head honcho of the Strip, Mr. House, wants to speak with me and directs me to the Lucky 38 Casino. So I head over to the Lucky 38 where Victor kindly opens the front door and takes me up in an elevator to the penthouse where I speak with a giant TV monitor featuring the face of a savvy businessman. He reveals himself to be Robert Edwin House, the founder of the pre-war company known as Robco. This is the same company responsible for almost all of the robots and computers in Fallout, alongside things like the Pip-Boy. He tells me how important we are and offers to pay me 
four times the original contract to retrieve the platinum chip from Benny and deliver it to him. The platinum chip is the package that Benny shot us for and Benny is the man in the checkered suit. A quick aside, I absolutely love House as a character and I'd argue he is one of the best written characters in all of Fallout, but in this run we're siding with the Legion. For now, I'm going to work with him as it nets me more caps, but this will be short lived. So it's time to go confront Benny who runs a casino here on the strip called the Tops alongside a group called the Chairman. I'm honestly not sure if I can take him on or not, so I start off by fast traveling back to Good Springs where I head up to the cemetery. I forgot to grab the cigarettes near my grave when I started this run so I pick those up before heading over to Boulder City to get Benny's lighter. I'm going to need both of these along with the note I found from Manny earlier when I go inside the Tops Casino. I need the lighter but Jessup still has it and we didn't kill him earlier so I run into Boulder City where I realize we haven't killed Jessup yet. So I head inside the building they're hiding out in and lure them out to fight the NCR soldiers. And after a close and butt clinching fight where I almost die to the cons, they all fall before me and I can get the lighter off of Jessup. I then take all these items I've gathered over to the Tops Casino where I speak with one of the chairmen named Swank and tell him all about what Benny did to me. I give him all of the evidence and he tells me I can go search Benny's room and he'll cover for me. I head up to Benny's room and find a Securitron named Yes Man, and I talk to him for a long time to find out that Benny had reprogrammed him to help anyone and everyone. He plans to use Yes Man to take down Mr. House and take over the Vegas Strip. I then try and tell Swank what I found, but this part of the quest bugs and it means that I'll have to fight Benny and his guards. I don't feel confident in my ability to do that right now, so I leave the Strip and buy some ammo from the Gun Runners before making my way over to a junkyard near Novak. While I make my way there, you should go down below and hit the like and subscribe buttons if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel and if this video gets 5,000 likes, I'll side with Mr. House in my next New Vegas challenge. Alright, here we are at the junkyard where I speak to a woman named Old Lady Gibson after waking her up and it's actually pretty evil the way I wake her up. I walk into this lady's house and make all the dogs in her shop start barking before asking about a nearby solar farm named Helios 1. She tells me the NCR doesn't let anyone in anymore so naturally I go over and try and talk my way in. The lady at the front doesn't let me in despite me trying very hard to convince her, so instead I put on my NCR disguise and sneak in through a side door. From there I speak to this hilarious scientist named Fantastic who basically just lied about being a scientist and now, well, he has, uh, hmm, I'll let him tell you. Got the whole NCR suckling my teats and it feels so good. Yeah, that. Either way, he explains that the power plant is currently only producing 1% of its total power output because the Brotherhood of Steel locked the solar panels in the wrong position and turned the security system on in the main tower that is preventing them from fixing it. He then gives me a password for one of the two terminals outside and asks me to clear the tower and set the power plant to send all of its power to the NCR. I then speak with a much more boring scientist who gives me another password for a different terminal and asks me to send the power to everyone evenly. With the two passwords in hand, and I head out of the city and try to use the first one and nearly get hit by a frag mine as I do. Luckily, I walk away unscathed and after using the terminal and resetting its connection with the mainframe in the tower, I then head over to the second terminal which is guarded by three NCR dogs. I kill the dogs without any issue as they kind of just stare at me as I unload my pistol into them. And after that, I reset the mainframe connection on the second terminal before entering the tower. The combat in here was tense and a real struggle and I don't think I can do it justice, so here's a robot disassembly assembly montage. With the battle bots leaking their fusion juice all over the floor, I make my way into the final room of the tower and repair a wire connecting the mainframe to the two terminals outside, and then I use the mainframe to activate the Archimedes prototype. I then head outside and flip a switch to turn on the prototype, and it's here where I get to witness the power of the sun absolutely destroying all of the NCR troops below. With those profligates turned into nothing but a few piles of ash, I level up and head back to the gun runners to buy even more ammo before 
making my way to the Topps Casino to finally take on Benny. I start by talking with him and convince him to give me 500 caps and speak with me privately. But instead of giving him the chance to run, I get some distance on him and his four bodyguards and start unloading with all my weapons. I end up dying a lot here. The bodyguards are kind of pushovers, but for whatever reason, Benny is just an absolute menace. Every time he opens fire with his pistol, I get staggered, and by the time I can return fire, I'm already dead. Either way, after a long and hard-fought battle, I eventually find a winning strategy of using stealth criticals to kill off all of his bodyguards from afar before taking him on one-on-one. -on -one. This was still close, but I do manage to kill him and make my way out of... oh one of the chairmen decides to shoot at me randomly. Well, I try again, and this time, the chairmen don't kill me, and I exit the Topps Casino, and am met with a dialogue pop-up from Volpez and Colta. He's the wolf boy from Nipton, and he gives me something called the Mark of Kaisar, and tells me that Kaisar has summoned me to speak with him at his fort, and that all of my crimes against the Legion have been forgiven. But, before I go do that, I figure I should collect my delivery fee from Mr. House. He gives me the caps, and then insists I listen to his TED talk about how the Securitron can solve all my issues if I just give him a small upfront payment of one platinum chip. He then gives the chip back and tells me to go to Kaisar's fort for some kind of secret surprise. It seems I have my path laid out before me, but it's around this point that I checked the New Vegas wiki and found out I completely forgot that there's a weapon I haven't grabbed that should make this run a lot easier. So instead of going to the fort immediately, I make a quick pit stop by Camp McCarran and grab this sniper rifle off a bunk bed and it's not even considered stealing. I'm just allowed to take it and I completely forgot that this existed and I wish I had done this way earlier. While I'm here, I also try and stealthily kill off this NCR sniper as he has a unique sniper rifle, but I fail and decide I'll come back for it later. Next up, I head over to Mick and Ralph's store in Freeside where I repair the nearly broken sniper rifle and stock up on ammo for it. With my new weapon in hand, I start making my way to Kaiser's fort, and along the way, I encounter the scariest enemy in all of the Mojave, the Cazador. I get lucky enough to cripple its wing with one of my first shots, which makes the fight easy, but I really hope to avoid fighting a group of them at any point. I also level up, and this gets me really close to 100 in the gun skill, which is pretty awesome. Continuing on, I make my way to Caesar's fort and speak with this trader. Now, I haven't mentioned it, but I've been looking for a hunting rifle scope for the past few hours of this run. I had a fully repaired hunting rifle for a while and none of the traders that stock the scope ever had it in their inventory and I have checked them dozens of times at this point. So understand, I was infuriated when this trader just randomly has the hunting rifle scope right after I pick up a sniper rifle which basically invalidates a reason to use the hunting rifle as they both use the same ammo and the sniper is better. Either way, I go speak with the pizza man himself and we have a long and interesting conversation that ends with him ordering me to go into a bunker underneath the fort and destroy whatever I find. To get into the bunker, I have to use the platinum chip, so I guess this is House's surprise. I enter the bunker and find House on a monitor inside, and he tells me this facility holds an army of Securitrons, and that I need to activate them for him. He also lets me know that, conveniently, he can't turn off the bunker's defenses, so I have to go off and kill all of the robots in my path. I start tearing through them one by one, and unlike the fight at Helios 1, I'm able to easily dispatch the force comprised of Protectrons and turrets thanks to my new sniper rifle. I then blow up four generators, causing the facility to enter a self-destruct sequence. With Kaisar's will done, I run past some sentry bots and exit the bunker to speak with Kaisar. He commends me for my work and tells me I need to kill Mr. House since he is now a shared enemy of myself and the Legion. This makes a lot of sense, so I immediately make my way over to the Lucky 38 and try to fight my way through the Securitrons, but it's just not happening. These robots have a ton of health and dish out so much damage that entering the penthouse is a bit of a death wish. I decide to just try and run past all the Securitrons, but that ends with me dying in the last room before reaching Mr. House. So I try for a third time, running past the Securitrons at the entrance, before using this terminal to enter a hidden elevator room, and then using another terminal to activate and use the elevator down to the control room where I find a sealed pod. I use a nearby terminal to unseal the pod, and out pops a decrepit, withered, and deathly man on a tray hooked up to all kinds of machinery. I talk with the real Mr. House, and he tells me I've already killed him by opening the pod. I then decide to put him out of his misery with a headshot, but uh, he's surprisingly sturdy, and I end up having to shoot him a few more times. 
Huh, this felt like a botched execution, but either way, I leave the control room and make my way back to the fort to speak with Caesar, who orders me to go convince the boomers to aid the Legion in the second battle of Hoover Dam. He says if I can't convince them to help me, then I must wipe them out. The boomers are a group of isolationists who use artillery and explosives to stop any outsider from ever reaching them at Nellis Air Force Base. I make my way over to the outskirts of their territory, where a man named George tries to convince me to gamble with him on whether or not his secret strategy can get me to the boomers without dying. I decide not to take his wager and just run towards the boomers base, but end up dying on my first attempt to dodge their artillery barrages. On my second attempt, things go much better and I manage to get all the way to the base in only two cycles of the artillery firing. I then make my way to the main gate where a boomer guard aims a missile launcher at me and tells me to wait for Raquel, who appears to be a sentient fence post? Either way, she takes me to an old lady named Mother Pearl, who gaslights the entire world by saying she's been expecting someone to show up and visit. Yeah, the artillery really made me think this would be an amazing vacation location. Well, the crazy old lady says I can freely come and go from the base and she encourages me to help out the other boomers around the base. And as I'm leaving her hut, I have a big ADHD moment and get dead focused on doing anything but the main storyline. So I run out to the ruins where the boomers were shooting artillery at me and find the corpse of a Brotherhood of Steel paladin. I loot the power armor and mission log off of their corpse as I've decided I want to get power armor training, so I'm going to track down all of these dead Brotherhood paladins and their holotapes. I start by going to Novak and making my way over to Nelson, where I meet a Legion member named Dead Sea and tell him I'll kill all of the NCR at Fort Forlorn Hope. I then head into the no man's land between Nelson and the camp, only to realize this isn't where one of the paladins is. I don't know why I thought it was here, but after a quick google I find out the real locations and make my way over to the Repcon headquarters. I enter the building and loot some dead fiends before watching a tour about Repcon given by a Mr. Handy. It's kinda cool to see him go around and talk about nuclear waste and robots, and the tour ends with this planetarium which actually looks really cool. I then go into a staff only room and find a a security keycard next to a skeleton. I use this keycard to make my way up to the restricted second level of the facility where I find a computer that lets me add my face to the facial recognition database, which I promptly do before finding another security card. I then parkour up to this locked door that leads to the top floor of the Repcon headquarters. I'm not a rapper. <laughs> Oh, this video is just nothing but dumb joke after dumb joke. It's bad. Why are you all still watching? <laughs> Either way, I pick the lock and start sneaking through the top level, but eventually get caught by a Mr. Handy who tells me I'm not authorized to be here and have 30 seconds to leave. So I make a mad dash over to the corpses of the paladins and grab all their stuff before running out of the Repcon HQ. Moving on to the final group of missing paladins, which just so happens to be at Black Mountain. This is a mountain base with a ton of broadcasting equipment run by a crazy super mutant. I manage to sneak my way past all of the patrolling super mutants until I reach a gate that leads to a huge crater. Inside and around this crater, there's a ton of these mutated beasts named centaurs, including a unique one named Mo. It really isn't difficult to deal with them as I keep my distance and pick them apart with my sniper rifle, and as long as I keep moving, they can't hit me with their ranged attacks. I never let them get close enough to hit me in melee, and with them all dead, I head into the crater and grab the loot off the final paladin team before making my way to the Hidden Valley Bunker Complex. I enter one of the bunkers and out of nowhere a bunch of Brotherhood members in power armor come flooding out and I'm told I can either speak with the Elder of the Brotherhood or die where I stand. I choose not death and get taken to Elder McNamara who tells me I need to prove myself trustworthy. He slaps an explosive slave collar around my neck and sends me out to kill an NCR ranger in one of the other Hidden Valley bunkers. I then decide for some reason to test out the collar by just running off in a random direction and it blows my head off. I don't know what I was expecting, but either way, I then make my way over to the bunker where the ranger is staying at, and he ambushes me with a dialogue pop-up. I sass him and it makes him like me before talking for a while. The conversation is extremely focused on the idea of me destroying the radio, so I walk over and destroy the radio, but for some reason I didn't connect the dots that if I did that, he would kill me for breaking his radio. So I die to him before trying again, and this time I try telling him the Brotherhood are in a bunker next to this one, and he breaks me out of the collar. But then a ton of Brotherhood soldiers 
murderers bust in and kill me and the ranger. Okay, option one and two didn't work. Time to go back to the good old reliable strategy of getting into a sneaky position and going for a stealth attack headshot. This is super lucky as it knocks the ranger down and allows me to take him out with a second shot before returning to the Brotherhood bunker where Elder McNamara removes the collar and says I'm trustworthy enough to be allowed to come and go from the bunker freely. He also asked me to meet him in the command room later, so I just run over to the command room, but he isn't here yet, so instead I speak to a man with one hell of a comb over named Paladin Hardin who asks me to investigate ways to get Elder McNamara dismissed so he can take over this chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel. I tell him I'll help and then wait to speak with the Elder telling him what happened to his missing paladins before he asks me to go across the Mojave and find a few Brotherhood scouts and get their reports for him. After thinking for a bit, I've decided I don't want to run all over the Mojave again, so instead I head over to Hardin and tell him all about the mission logs and he says that the Elder changed his men's order. I then go to Paladin Ramos, head of security, as Hardin mentioned that Ramos would know more about elders being dismissed. He tells me that he already told Hardin all about this topic, but he does give me access to the logs in the Brotherhood's database about elder dismissal. So I head over to Scribe Ibsen, who tells me that the bunker's database is infected with a virus, and that I need to run around and find three terminals with the virus and isolate them. This is a little minigame that is mostly luck-based, so I fail the first time before succeeding on my second attempt to isolate all three terminals. This gives me access to the database and I learn that one of the previous elders got dismissed for breaking the chains that bind. I'm not sure what that is, so I go and ask Ramos, who basically says it's just a standard chain of command stuff for their military. He then gives me access to the database to read the rule itself, and this is where my ADHD strikes again, and I end up spending about an hour doing stuff like stealing from the Brotherhood Armory and doing an unmarked quest to kill a ton of rad scorpions and recover a pistol. Overall, it wasn't very important or interesting. I do end up dying once to said rad scorpions before destroying their entire population, and I also stole a ton of high value items to sell later, but getting back to the task at hand, I manage to drag myself back to the database where I read the chains that bind and it reveals that Elder McNamara broke this rule by changing Hardin's orders earlier. I take this information to Hardin, who tells me it will take a while for him to get McNamara ousted and then the screen fades to black before coming back with Hardin as the Elder. I then ask to join the Brotherhood of Steel and he says I have to go kill off the Van Graffs. They're a group of energy weapon stealers, so I head off to Freeside to do just that. I start by heading inside the Silver Rush and asking for work, and Gloria, the leader of the Van Graffs, tells me she needs someone to join a guy named Simon in guarding the front door. I then go outside and Simon gives me a laser rifle along with some combat armor before telling me how to do the job before my shift starts. It's a relatively boring shift until the last customer shows up. He seems pretty trustworthy to me, so I let him inside the building and a few seconds later there's a massive explosion. I run inside with Simon, who gets angry at me and starts fighting, but it's really not an issue as my sniper rifle puts him in the dirt with ease. I then return to the bunker and get given the rank of Paladin by Hardin and finally obtain power armor training. I then go to leave the bunker and have this hilarious moment. <laughs> oh, it's too good. Oh, look at him go. Look at him go. Oh, it's too good. Look at that. <laughs> oh, yes. Dance, little turret. Dance. Dance for my amusement. <laughs> After watching the turret dance, I head over to the Gunrunners and do some trading, and I get really lucky by finding a laser rifle scope. With a new weapon in my arsenal, I'm ready to take on the Boomer's questline, so I head over to Nellis Air Force Base and speak with Raquel. She's the sentient fence post from earlier, and she runs security for the Boomers and asks me to go kill a bunch of ants in their generator building. That doesn't sound too hard, but I'm going to check out all of the quests available before doing any of them. So next up, I head over to the medical tent, and I don't have a high enough medicine skill to help out here, so after that I head to the museum and listen to the boomer's history, which is mostly about how they like blowing up anyone who isn't a boomer. I then speak with this old man named Loyal, who asks me to repair some solar panels on the roof of the generator building. I tell him I'll go grab some spare parts from Helios 1 to repair them before speaking with the last leader of the boomers named Jack. He asks me to give him any scrap metal I can find, so I proceed to sneak around the hangar that he's currently in and steal 
as much metal as I can find before turning it into him, which is just very funny to me. I just imagine like, hey, I found some scrap metal, here you go, and he's like, oh man, that's great, I just lost a whole bunch. I just love the idea that he's completely oblivious to the fact that his own stuff is going missing at the same rate I'm giving it to him. Anyways, I head over to Helios 1 and am pleasantly surprised to see some Legion troops occupying the facility. I then run into Fantastic, who has gone full turncoat and now works for the Legion, and constantly says, hey man, when in Rome, which is hilarious to me. I then run around the solar array, salvaging broken solar panels before heading back to the boomers, where I repair the solar array and then head to the hangar and turn in more scrap metal before telling Loyal that the solar array is fixed. I then head over to the generator building and start fighting through the ants and looting everything of value. The game does end up crashing here when I reload and I die from shooting one of the artillery shells on accident, but other than that, the ants don't put up too much resistance, so here's a montage of me killing ants. Afterwards, I go inform Raquel that the generator building is safe, completing the quest, before heading over to the hangar and stealing some more scrap metal from them before turning it in, giving me enough fame with the boomers to progress their questline once more. I then go speak with Pearl, who asks me to speak with Loyal about obtaining a bomber for the boomers. When I speak with Loyal, he tells me of his plans to reflow a bomber that crashed into Lake Mead, and I tell him I'll do it, before heading over to Nipton where I grab a pressure cooker so I can get a rebreather from Jack. With the rebreather Breather in hand, I head over to Lake Mead and swim over to the bomber after being chased by a Mirelurk. I place the two ballast charges on each wing of the bomber before swimming to shore and detonating the charges. The bomber floats to the surface and I return to Loyal, who crashes my game when I try to speak with him. I guess he's just really excited to have a new toy. Either way, I reload and tell him the bomber is his before heading over to Pearl to tell her the good news and she promises to help me at the second battle of Hoover Dam. I then return to Kaisar and tell him the boomers are my ally and he tells me to go form an alliance with the White Glove Society before having a massive seizure and getting angry with me. I head off to the Vegas Strip and start working over the White Glove Society who run the Ultralux and really quickly I'd like to ask you all to consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel. This really helps out the channel a ton and helps you stay up to date on my latest uploads. I enter the casino and speak with an old man in a cowboy hat named Heck Gunderson which is one hell of a name and he tells me his son is missing and disappeared from the casino. I tell him I'll help him find his son, before speaking with Marjorie, who runs the casino. She tells me about another missing person and sends me to speak with her second-in-command, Mortimer. I go speak with Mortimer and use the cannibal perk to convince him to let me in on a plan to get the White Gloves to return to cannibalism. He then sends me to speak with Ted, the missing Gunderson boy, after revealing that the White Gloves kidnapped him after their original entree escaped. Unfortunately, I don't have a high enough speech stat to convince Ted not to become violent with the White Gloves, so instead, I leave the casino and try to get a level up to increase my speech skills. And what better way to get a level up than proving myself to the Legion by taking out Camp Forlorn Hope for Dead Sea and Nelson. But before I do that, I need an upgrade for my sniper, so I spend a while resetting shops until Alexander at the 188 trading post is selling the sniper rifle suppressor modification which I buy and equip on my sniper before making my way out to Camp Forlorn Hope where I set up in a good sniping position on the cliffs nearby and settle in for a long war of attrition with the hordes of NCR troops here. I end up spending 20 minutes slowly but surely picking off NCR troopers one by one and this was actually super valuable to me as I learned that my scope mod has been causing me issues throughout this run. I noticed this issue where the crosshair was not actually aiming where the gun shot. It's most noticeable with the laser sniper rifle but it appears my shots don't actually go to the center of the reticle, instead they are slightly up and to the left. This explains why some perfectly aimed shots just seem to miss out of the blue, and after learning about this and adjusting for it, it started to feel way more consistent to snipe at long distances. Either way, this epic 20 minute long battle eventually ends with me victorious over the NCR. All that's left to do is to sneak into the command post and kill one last NCR leader, which I do with ruthless efficiency before running away from the remaining NCR troops chasing me. Unfortunately though, the game crashes right when I leave the camp, so I end up having to run away a second time 
time, but it wasn't too big a deal. I then fast travel back to Dead Sea and tell him the good news. In response, he gives me a new blade and says he'll send word of my actions to Kaisar. With that out of the way, it's time to return to the White Gloves, and I did end up leveling up during the fight and now have enough speech to pass Ted's check. I return him to his father and collect my caps before heading over to secure dinner for the White Gloves. I approach this man at a shack and use my gun skill to pistol whip him, but this actually ends up failing the quest, so instead, I head over to Mick and Ralph's to grab some naughty nightwear, which should give me enough of a speech skill to convince him to go to the White Gloves without force. I also sell the Rat Slayer while I'm here, as I don't need it anymore, and weight has become an issue with my inventory. I then return to the soon-to-be entree while wearing the naughty nightwear and in a power armor helmet, and it turns out I didn't even need this dress. I can just use a strength check to knock him out and throw him in a dumpster nearby his shack. Huh. Well, at least I did it while being the pinnacle of sex appeal. I return to Mortimer, and he tells me he's gonna serve the White Gloves human flesh, and then wait 22 hours to speak with him again. He then tells me that the White Gloves are cannibals again, and that I should speak with Marjorie about them pledging allegiances to Kaisar. So I do just that, and complete the quest by returning to Kaisar to tell him the good news. Editor Willow here, I forgot to mention that I grabbed an anti-material rifle from the Gunrunners in between completing this quest and meeting with Caesar. He applauds me, and then blanks out on me while trying to tell me that my next task is to destroy destroy the Brotherhood of Steel. I use my medicine skill for some speech text, but he ignores me and sends me off to kill the Brotherhood. There really isn't much to talk about with this. I sneak through the bunker, stealing all three keycards from the leaders of the Brotherhood, before using this terminal to generate a self-destruct code for the bunker. I then set the bunker to self-destruct, before making a mad dash out of the bunker while being shot at by the Brotherhood. I end up dying a couple of times, but through the clever use of the Turbo Kim, I manage to make it out and destroy the Brotherhood, before returning to the little seizure Caesar. After reporting on the death of the Brotherhood, he invites me to speak with him privately. He then proceeds to tell me all of his medical symptoms and ask for a diagnosis, and I tell him he probably has a brain tumor, and he makes me his personal physician. After looking at all the options, I realize that my medicine skill just isn't even close to being high enough, so instead, I'm gonna go get a sensor module for the autodoc in his tent. So I head over to the New Vegas Medical Clinic and buy a strength implant before heading over to Camp McCarran, where I use my upgraded sniper to get a stealth critical on the sniper from before so I can get his unique rifle. With a couple of new weapons in hand, I head over to this cave that's infested with golden geckos. These geckos are no joke, as even with power armor, they're taking huge chunks out of my health and killing me. But eventually, I make my way past them into Vault 34, where I run into a ton of feral ghouls, which are surprisingly tanky. Normally, I'd describe the combat more, but this run is getting quite long in the tooth, so I'll summarize by letting you know that on my first attempt, I make it all the way to the auto dock and get the sensor, only to die to one of the last ghouls I needed to fight. Then, on my second attempt, I get the sensor and go to escape the caves, only to die to this family of golden geckos outside the caves a couple of times. Eventually, though, I manage to dodge enough attacks and kill enough of these geckos to allow myself to barely limp away from them and back to Caesar's camp, where I install the sensor and have the auto dock perform the surgery to save Caesar's life. He then wakes up to give me a new task, which is to assassinate the president of the NCR who is visiting Hoover Dam to give a speech to the troops. I go to leave his tent after talking and make the mistake of putting on the NCR ranger outfit in his tent, causing me to be murdered by his guards. I go through all of that surgery stuff again, and this time I fast travel before donning my disguise, only to end up dying to a ranger hit squad. Really, just a calamity of errors here, isn't it? Either way, I do eventually meet up with a frumentari who gives me all of the intel he has on the presidential visit before giving me an NCR trooper uniform. We then head to the dam and get ready for the assassination, and my game starts disintegrating. It starts off with me dying to one of the rangers after getting too close, which is admittedly just a dumb move from me, but from there on, the game just freaks out and my weapons just stop working. I kill this ranger in the tower, but for some reason, anytime I'm actually on top of the tower and try to aim down sights, my guns disappear, meaning aiming is impossible. I end up struggling with this bug for a long time, and I even try and come up with other ways to assassinate the president, but after an hour of troubleshooting,
troubleshooting, even trying turning on and off mods, nothing is working. So I decide to just snipe the president in third person. This works despite being finicky, and I then fast travel back to the fort only to die again because I forgot my NCR disguise. Also for anyone curious, my scopes and weapons work fine all of a sudden once I'm done with this quest. So I'm guessing this was just some one-off random bug. I then get told by Caesar that it's time for the second battle of Hoover Dam and to report to Legatlanius. Remember a few seconds ago when I said my game was disintegrating? Well that was just an appetizer for what the second battle of Hoover Dam has in store for me. The battle starts off really well with us tearing through the NCR soldiers. A lot of them are using sniper rifles which means each time I kill one I get a bit of an ammo rebate and I can repair my own sniper using their broken ones. By staying on the back lines and letting the legion troops go in front of me and tank all the damage I'm able to kill off all of these NCR troops with no issue but I do end up crashing right before entering the halfway shack on the bridge. After that, I end up falling off Hoover Dam, but living, so I had to reload to a save before that. And from there, things just went haywire. I actually blitzed through the majority of the dam without issue, but the moment I start going through the power stations, things start to get difficult. First off, I die to one of the NCR's heavy troopers, which is just a small taste of what's to come, as I enter the final dungeon with General Oliver. I die over, and over, and over a dozen more times. This section was absolute hell. One thing that is 100% on me is I forgot to store up enough healing supplies for this fight, but other than that, there was just a bunch of weird buggy glitchiness going on. For starters, the room with traps has random invisible traps going off constantly. There's a ranger running through this maze of cubicles that isn't hostile, but I later found out needs to be killed for me to progress. There's another ranger that will guaranteed one-shot me, so I have to get multiple sneak criticals on him to kill him. I run into a situation where a quick save puts me into a death loop because of another invisible explosive trap. That one forced me to restart the entire section from the beginning. Also, about when I entered Hoover Dam, my scopes became super inconsistent with shots at very close range just not hitting. I think you get the point of things just being off. But that's not even the worst part of it. I get past all of that way faster than this next section I have to deal with. General Oliver and his NCR heavy troopers. You remember me dying to just one heavy trooper earlier? Yeah, that was nothing. I have to fight through over half a dozen of them in this one small room. And to make matters worse, I can't run away because the only room I can run to is the one that keeps on respawning with invisible traps. So I die over and over. I slam my head into this wall for over two hours straight until I get this run where the stars align and almost all of the heavy troopers decide to try and take me on in melee combat. This allows me to run away while hip firing shots into them with the anti-material rifle and sniper rifle. But even this attempt where I kill the general and all of his heavy troopers fails because I hadn't killed that neutral ranger from earlier and when I went to kill him I died to an invisible trap. So I end up dying even more times until I get the same luck and this time, I kill the ranger by waiting for him to run around the maze again, which in hindsight is what I should have done the first time, but I'm just chalking that one up to being absolutely infuriated with the game. Anyways, I kill him, but that's not the end of it, as I have to go through this death maze again to speak with Legatlanius and complete the run. I die some more to these invisible traps, but eventually, through sheer power of will and masochism, I limp my way out of the dungeon and speak with the Legate while answering the question, can I beat Fallout New Vegas's very hardcore difficult as a sniper? Yes, yes I can. But there's another question we have yet to answer. Are you going to be immersing yourself in the awe-inspiring content of War Thunder with me this coming Friday? You can play for free on PC, PlayStation, and Xbox using the link in the pinned comment or description below. All new and returning players that haven't played in the last six months will receive a massive bonus pack across all platforms that includes multiple premium vehicles, 100,000 silver lions, and seven days of premium account time. It's only available for a limited time, so be quick if you want to join Join me next Friday on my Discord where I'm going to be playing War Thunder with viewers. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting a new challenge suggestion below. I'd like to thank my patrons and channel members as their support has been tremendous, and if you like this video, I think you'd like the video where I try and beat Fallout 4 with only grenades. You all are beautiful, and this is Willow, signing off.
Cross out the ones who hurt my cries and watch me weep.